Welcome to Breeders Syndicate, where we explore the history of a clandestine scene through the eyes of the folks who lived it. I'm Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds. I'll occasionally be joined by my co-host Nato Dog, breeder and grower from Mendocino. Welcome to the underground. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm going to record a short here. Um, one of the questions I get asked the most often is, what is Blue Bonnet? So to talk about Blue Bonnet, I have to go back quite a few years before to when I was in San Diego and I was working at a collective called BCC as their grower there. Um, whenever Bud would come in and it had seeds, I always told the owner to let me know. So someone brought in some bud, and I, I looked at it and smelled it, and it smelled like, like sweet peanut butter. It was beautiful. Um, I, it was super frosty, had seeds in it. So I was like, hey, I'm going to you know snake some of these seeds out. And uh, w- w- what did they bring this in as? And he's like, well, we have it labeled strawberry cough, but he brought it in as blueberry. And I remember putting that in the back of my head thinking, there's no way this is blueberry. This is, this is peanut butter. This is silly. So anyways... Um, Cut to a few months later, I'm going through my stuff, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll pop some of those peanut buttery seeds, see what comes out. So I pop a bunch of them, and out comes, one, in one of them, the most beautiful purple blueberry-smelling plant I'd ever seen. Um, this is what I refer to as the riot berry from then on out, and I worked this line for several generations, um, sold every single seed I had of it. Yeah, bread true for purple traits and the blueberry uh, it was like blueberry jam blueberry compote terps but the problem was is the resin production was kind of low and the potency wasn't really recreationally viable so like if people were smoking it for nerve pain and stuff it was it was killer it was the only thing that helped like a tooth abscess for me back in the day when nothing helped um, yeah so I had great pain relieving qualities but it just was pretty worthless for recreational potency. Um, Cut to several years later, I lose my clone that I've selected from this. I lose everything. I sell everything. You know, it it just, it it occurs that I end up with nothing but the BX1 seeds left. And the BX1 seeds, unfortunately, weren't a success in the way that I would have liked them to be. If something's a BX1, I'm usually backcrossing for a specific trait. The goal in that was to backcross just for the blueberry and um and uh yeah the blueberry traits and the purple but it didn't happen um you can get a lot of different berries in there in the bx1 um but you can't it's it's a hit or miss on the the berry and it should have been it should have been better so what i chose to outcross was not ideal um so i decided you know what like i have a massive blueberry collection i've collected blueberry over all the years um even while i was working the right berry stuff i was still collecting every blueberry line i saw buying every blueberry line i saw no matter how old or from when or from where i bought it so i decided to run a bunch of these uh to look for a good blueberry breeding female and what i ended up finding was the most amazing breeding male that i've, uh, I've encountered in my whole career I genuinely think right now, looking back, pre me using the blue bonnet, like I, I don't think anything came close to, to what was achieved with this. Now, blue bonnet itself, I had heard about um, while I was doing my riotberry projects, so I wasn't really paying much attention to, to what was going on um, with other people's blueberry, you know, because I was like, my shit's the best. What the fuck do I need another blueberry for? Whatever, you know? Like, I, I had uh, blue clones come by, like the, the Dabney Blue, um, different different DJ Short blueberry selections. Um, but, yeah, no, Blue Bonnet, it, I, I, blue bonnet I, I had just heard all this stuff about that it was a great blueberry muffin strain, you know, for those terps, and it was, it was pretty true for that. So I kept that in my memory bank, and, um, yeah, yeah. When I went to go pop seeds, Bodhi passed it to me. Now, it was made by Lone Star. Lone Star is no longer with us. Uh, rest in peace. He owned Texas Resin Company. Uh, the original name for it was the Texas Super Blue. Um, and it later became Blue Bonnet. Because, you know, he's from Texas. It's the state flower. This is a beautiful flower. You know, that's, I guess that's where he was going with it. Um, what I could find... 
um, from him talking about it, he said that he had gotten an already worked line of DJ Short's Blueberry. So someone had taken DJ Short's work, worked it, and then Lone Star worked it further. He didn't really say how many generations was in between there and there. Um, and it's, so it's supposed to be a pure DJ Blueberry selected for those traits. However, however, after crossing it to many things, running out every single line that we crossed it to, I am fully convinced that, that this blue bonnet plant is it's either an anomaly of all all blueberry that exists or it was outcrossed at some point to something very potent and very resinous and somehow still true breeding for the blueberry turfs. It doesn't have a lot of the mutations that blueberry passes and if it were just a worked unoutcrossed blueberry several generations in past DJs, it would be more inbred and you'd see a lot more of the nasty recessives pop up. Um, yeah, I don't see any of that. It breeds true for potency, for high terpene content, like the terpene percentage. Um, the blueberry terps are very, very dominant in, in almost everything it crosses to except for super skunk. For some reason, super skunk stuff is, is, is resistant to it a little bit. Um, with that said, everything I crossed it to that had super skunk in it did show some modicum of berry. It's just almost all the other lines you'd find only berry phenos in them, even if it was an outcross to you know something else, uh, like like our cherry AK blue bonnet. You could find only blueberry phenos. Um, yeah, so that that's the the short history on the blue bonnet. It's supposed to be a worked DJ line. Um, I think it's a worked outcrossed and worked further, which actually means that they did more work <laughs> than they're even intimating. Um, and it took more talent than they're intimating. So it, it, it's an odd situation. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's just, just that one anomaly that happens to be the sport that breeds true for all these traits d doesn't breed true for any of the inbred traits. I just don't know. But what I did find was the best male cannabis plant that I have ever worked with in my life. It was incredibly true breeding, so I could easily predict how each plant, each plant that I was familiar with, as far as the clone mothers that I was crossing it to, I could easily predict what the outcomes would be. I almost always knew visually everything. It was, it was, um, it was pretty uncanny. The one that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't predict would be probably one of the best in the whole thing was a, um, a banana punch cut I had that Skunk Tech selected from Symbiotic Genetics work. And it was banana OG purple punch. And it was like a, a grape now a later kind of smell. Um, big yield, super frosty. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't very well versed with purple punch at the time. So I was just like, oh, that's supposed to be that weak plant, you know, like the one that's not very potent that people like. Well, I have this clone. I'll just stick it in the fucking corner or whatever. What, whatever happened with the blue bonnet and the purple punch, the tests, the THC ranges are all 22 to 35 percent. Now, we all know that labs differ in range on what they'll tell you percentage wise you know you're buying a service the higher percentage the more likely you're to come back whatever it still tests very high much higher than purple punch and much higher than blueberry um so that's another thing that showed me there's probably an outcross in there you know packing on resin production too um but yeah this this combination of blueberry and grape just turned out to be one of the most beautiful mouth-watering fruity uh, flavors that it, it's one of the craziest things I've ever I've ever had so um, yeah I think in the future I'll probably be doing more work on the line we called punchy blooster which is the purple punch banana OG blue bonnet um, yeah that it will probably be doing more work on that one the bubble berry which was the Indiana bubblegum blue bonnet and um, there's a few more we'll probably touch on in the near future uh, if I if I had my druthers, I would only ever work on the blue bonnet stuff because it, it it was just that predictable to breed with. And everything that I'm seeing, I love 
but realistically, a lot of people have had a lot of bad experiences with blueberry over the years. And trying to explain to someone how I, with the assistance of everyone that came before me, Lone Star, DJ, we improved the whole blueberry line together. And it's something that people who've been soured on blueberry need to try if you really haven't experienced true blueberry jam jelly terps it's uh it's it's wild and i think um, the more places that are growing it the more you're going to see it pop up because these are spitting keepers left and right so yeah that's that's the blue bonnet story um come check us out on the breeder syndicate patreon we have our own discord where we all hang out um we also have riotseeds.com that's my shop where you could buy my feminized seed spray. Uh, make your own fem seeds at home. And that is it. Want more Breeder Syndicate? Be sure to check out our Patreon by going to Google and searching Breeder Syndicate Patreon. We have a secret Discord where we are available at most times and interact daily. There are a lot of perks to be had there, so check it out. Need seeds? Check out riotseeds.com where you can get our seeds and our reversal spray for making your own feminized seeds.